God bless you, family, and welcome to Victory in Christ Ministry, Incorporated and Fairness. We're so glad you're worshiping with us tonight for our 31st pastoral anniversary celebration. Come on, let's give God praise. We're giving God praise in the sanctuary, and we want you to give God praise online. Get in the service, believe God for your miracle tonight, and watch God bless you as we worship God and give God praise for our leaders for 31 years of pastoral ministry. Now this time we're going higher in the Lord with our praise and worship team in Jesus' name. Welcome them. How many of y'all came to celebrate? Hallelujah. How do you think you got? We worship you, God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. The Jehovah Jireh, my provider, my strong tower, my everything, in my hurricane, in my everything.
to take a little time right now and thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. I just want to take a little
because I feel God. I feel God. Thank God for the work of experience, but I feel God. Like I said, if you only know what I had to get to, get down here. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. We're so glad to hear worship can with us the second night of our 31st pastoral anniversary celebration. Our prayer is that you receive all that God has for you in his presence and that tonight's message transforms your life. This evening, we will hear our dynamic message from Pastor Kent Holmes of the Word and Worship Church in Boston. Let's continue the celebration. Everyone is encouraged to join us as we continue our 31st pastoral anniversary celebration on tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. with Bishop Teresa Hicks, and then we will climax the celebration on this Sunday, March 6th at 5 p.m. with Chief Apostle Freddie Washington. All the Ashley family is encouraged to be prepared to, go, to give the anniversary seed gift, which is due on Sunday, March 6th in the climax service. Come expecting a move of God. Please remember that faith masks are always required in our worship service facility. And when this service has concluded, we ask that everyone please go directly to your cars and do not linger around the sanctuary as we are still using caution due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And we thank you in advance for your cooperation. We encourage all parents to please use our nursery. The nursery is located in classroom one. We ask that there be no eating or drinking of any kind in the sanctuary. We also ask that there be no unnecessary walking of caution during the ministry of God's word. If you have to use the restroom, we encourage you to do so during offering time. Enjoy the remainder of the service. Thank you, Deaconess. Tell me a bell for that for the announcements. Come on, clap your hands to Jackson, some praise. Come on, give us some praise. Come on, give us some praise. And I think I'm going to give it to Jesus and all that he does with me. He's getting radical. I can't help it. I know where he brought me from, where he's taking me to, not what I used to be. I'm serving the Most High God, who's a provider. Pandemic, epidemic, wars, rumors of war, he's still a provider. He's still Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. He's our everything. So that's why I praise him like I do. No sad stories, I gotta praise him. continue to praise him while we make something. You have to praise your way out of it. 31 years. 31 years. I got to get this little testimony real quick. I have known Chief Apostle Woods and Pastor Woods since I was a little girl. <laughs> and I've always known her through her songs, her teaching. I always say she has such a sweet, teachable spirit and she loves to teach and give God's word. Not what she think, but the word of God. I love you. I thank you for all that you do. I call her like a spiritual mother. I might not do, I might do my little drive-bys and stop by and see her sometime. Unannounced. Don't want to be seen, just want to come and give her back my flowers and tell, give her her flowers and say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you and pastor for doing what y'all do. Because a lot of pastors have thrown in the towel. A lot of them have walked away. But you remain faithful. And because of that, greater is on the way. You haven't seen anything yet. You're reaping reaping the harvest when it didn't seem like everything was going the way it needed to go. God was working behind the scenes. And now you shall reap. And you shall enjoy. And you will sit back and enjoy the fruits of your labor. In Jesus' name, we get free. Somebody if you ain't too glad to make you mad. Come on, clap your hands. This is the leader. by Minister 
Kimberly Padua. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. I am excited to be before you today. God bless you, pastors. I am excited to be before you today. It is an honor to see that this man and woman of God for 31 years stood in it. They did not give up, and that is something to be thankful for, to honor God for. I don't know about you, but I thank God for our for our pastors, our leaders, our
one. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this song I'm, I'm writing. And it's called, I Give You My Worship. And about a month ago, I was going through what I understand many of us have gone through in our lifetime. And that's through the desert that we all have to go through. Amen? So about a month ago, I was coming before the Lord and I was so, something within me was just not settled within me. And I said, God, where am I in this place? And I knew then that I was at my desert, my dry season. And I don't know about you, but in, this, in these moments in our lives, sometimes it's hard to give God your worship, amen? Sometimes it's hard to even say hallelujah, amen? But in this moment, I said, God, I have nothing else left but to give you my worship. I began to weep before the Lord. And these words came right out of my spirit. And I'm going to sing that before you today, before I'm done. This is my last song. It goes like this, very simple. I give you my worship. <laughs> I give you my worship.
That's where we all should be at a place. Constantly giving worship. And telling God, we thank you. We praise you. In spite of what it is, what we're going through. I thank God for being here. But I would count it that I have to give honor but honor is due. I thank God for my husband, Bishop Smith, being here with me. Look at your neighbor. It's a neighbor. It's almost time for the word. But we're going to worship in our gift. Say it again. It's almost time. Look at your other neighbor. It's a neighbor. It's almost time for the word. But we're going to worship in our gift. Come on, clap your hands and tell the Lord. By our finance committee. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands and give the Lord a praise in the building. Come on, I'm telling you, the worship and the power of God's in the place. Amen. Come on, can we just give God a real worship as we begin to uh, prepare ourselves to give on tonight? Amen. Because we know that God says what He loves a cheerful giver. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. That means a hilarious giver. That means when I give to God my offering. I ought to be coming around shouting and dancing, amen? Because God has been so good to me, amen, that I cannot hold back on him, amen? Tonight we know what we're here for. When it's not by accident or happenstance, we are here to honor our leaders for 31 years of pastoral ministry. And I dare somebody to clap right there. I know you said we've been clapping all night, but for the work and the time and the, the, the sweat and the tears come on here, we ought to be thanking God. Amen. That God has kept our leaders. Amen. In their right mind. Oh, come on, dear. In their right mind. Amen. Giving God praise and glory. And we thank God for our leaders tonight. We're going to get in and out of the way tonight. I need your help. Amen. That if those that could stand with us tonight with the best seat that you have. Amen. For our leaders and for this great man of God. We got a preacher in the house, y'all. Amen. And come on. Can we thank God for the Word of Worship Church and Pastor Ken Holmes and every church. Amen. That is represented. The pastors in the back. God bless you. Amen. And we thank God for... Oh, everyone, amen. It's time to give. We ask you to stand all over the building, amen, with your seed in your hand. Tonight, I came to give, and I want you to follow me, amen. I'm starting it off with a $20 seed in each offering tonight, amen. And I need those that can follow us or that even greater, amen. So we want everybody in the building to stand with your seed in your hand, amen. And we're going to hold it high. We always say here at Victory, hold it as high as you want God to bless you, amen. And we're going to pray tonight. Father, you see the seed that we hold tonight. You know, oh God, that we have the desire to plant seed into good ground. And God, we pray tonight that you would take the seed that we have and that you would multiply it, that you would breathe your breath of abundance on our finances tonight. God, this offering, let it be increased. God, that as we give, that you would press it down, shake it together, and run it over for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to let you know, if you're giving by way of cash or check, you can come to our offering table. But if you would like to give through Cash App tonight, you can do that. Our leader's Cash App name is dollar sign Mary L. Woods. That's capital M, capital L, capital W. Amen. Again, that's dollar sign Mary L. Woods, capital M, capital L, capital W. Amen. Amen. If you would like to give to Pastor Kent tonight, Pastor Kent Holmes, you can do that at dollar sign word and worship seven. That's again dollar sign word and worship seven if you would like to give through cash app. Amen. God bless you in the hands of our finance committee.
all clap your hands and say the Lord. Thank you. We thank you for your worship and goodness. Now we're going to have a selection by the Word and Worship Church Choir. Give them a hand as they come. Because it's almost time for the Word. Come on, give them a hand as they come. Let's give him a great praise.
get to it. Put me in the F. Can you give me the F? We're going to go old school. Someone said old school today. We're going to go old school. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go back. We're going to go back.
Egypt, the only name that works, and the only name that heals, and the only name that saves and delivers. Amen. You can be, you can minister, musician. You can uh, you do reach with that matchless, wonderful name, of Jesus the Christ, uh, as Lord and Savior of our life. Can we put those blessed hands together just one more time? Facebook and you see them shouting at another church 
Amen. Amen. And you wonder how am I even in my right frame of mind? Amen. 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 You ought to thank God for your leadership. You talking about you thinking about leaving. Sometimes the pastor thinking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. FYI, my, my keys E flat. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the musician a hand. We just met. Amen. It's our first date. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'll get you where I need you to be. Amen. <laughs>
figured I was in this traffic jam because of Friday afternoon traffic. The problem was it was Wednesday. Yeah, it wasn't the traffic. Um, kept sliding up at, at a turtle's speed. And I said, well, maybe they're doing some construction on the highway. Did not see any cones, did not see any construction. Still baffled, amazed, and confused. We still begin to inch up just a little bit. Checked my Google Maps and said, maybe there's a storm coming. Prayer there was sun shining everywhere. Finally, I got to the place where I could see what the problem was. And the problem was there was a tow truck broke down in the middle of the road. Um, cars were passing the tow truck, putting hands up a prayer. Amen. Cars were passing the tow truck. You all right? You all right? Nobody was stopping for Mr. Tow Truck. The truck they used to call when they needed a job. They now drive by. Truck they call when they lock their keys out and need a breakthrough. They just driving around. The truck they call when they're flat and out of gas. They just drive on by. The truck they call when their marriage ain't, ain't doing right. They, 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 just, they, just, they just, 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 just drive on by. They, they, they. The truck they call, the truck they call when their bills are due and they need some money from the church. They just drive. <laughs> Does the tow truck call when the tow truck breaks down? Just tell somebody, I think I see where he's going. I think I see where he's going. Every pastor needs a tow every now and then. Every pastor needs a mentor, counselor, because we're preaching and preaching. Who does the pastor call? When it's weak in the service. Who does the pastor call? Come on. When it feels like cussing. Well, who does the pastor call? Um, David had a Nathan. David had a Jonathan. And David had a Samuel. Because everybody needs a Nathan, a Samuel, and a Jonathan. Jonathan, someone you can go labor with. Come on. And you can and you can just get real and say, hey, I think your, your, your father's crazy. He's throwing spears at me. Something wrong with this woman. So everybody needs a Jonathan, someone that you can talk to like it's real. Can I get a witness? Amen. But also someone needs a Samuel, someone who will speak into your life. Lay hands on you when you are out back being overlooked. Everybody needs a Samuel come who will encourage you. And while you are being overlooked and underlooked, it will not change your outlook. But then also everybody needs a Nathan. Somebody who will get in your face and tell you the truth about you. Tell you, come on, that you need to get it right, that you need to get it together. You need a Nathan. Someone who will tell you, please put some deodorant on. You need a Nathan. Somebody who will tell you, clean your car. Tell somebody I need a Nathan to tell you, come on, you know that tie don't match that shirt. You need a Nathan. You need a Nathan in your life who can keep it real and say, David, kill a man. Don't start the car yet. We'll get there. We'll get there. Jonah is a preaching prophet. Who needs a tow? He, he needs a tow. Um, now that we forgot to tell people that you can be saved and need a tow. Uh, forgot to tell people you could be wholly sanctified, come on, and have a psychiatrist. Forgot to tell people you could be anointed and, and, and tongue talking and on medication. We forgot to tell people, come on, that you can be coming, running for Jesus, come on, and sometimes be on E. Jonah needs a dog. I'm 
just a little Baptist preacher from Word and Worship Church from Vine, New Jersey. Amen, amen. And my assignment, good to see you, Sunita and Linda, my assignment is to locate you. Before you can get a toe, the first question they're going to ask is, where is you? Where are you at? Sometimes my wife will call me and say, uh, honey, I need direction. My first question is, said that's strong where are you at amen where are you first question in the bible adam said god says where are you uh, jimmy i want to locate you but after we locate you then we get the toe to you and then we'll see if the lord can bring you to the safe place so that's my assignment for tonight just to locate you see where you are get the tow truck to you and see if we can get you to where you need to go. Uh, there's four types of people in this room. There's someone who is running to Jesus. That's salvation. There is someone who is running with Jesus. That's sanctification. There is someone who is running for Jesus. That's service. And there's someone who is running from Jesus. That's sin. Tweet those. Amen. Tweet those. Okay. Uh, we are all in the struggle together. Uh, Jonah has been given a word. The word of God is from the Lord. If you look at it in Jonah chapter 1, maybe verse 1, verse 2, if someone is operating uh, the scriptures for the day. And the Bible says that the word of the Lord came upon Jonah. The word of the Lord came upon Jonah at the most, uh, I would say, comfortable time in Jonah's life. So things are going good for Jonah. Jonah is a Hebrew. Uh, the Hebrew NFL football team, come on, they're winning, amen. The economy's good, the weather is good, and Jonah is extremely comfortable, and this is when God sends him a word. Have you ever got a word from the Lord when you were comfortable? Because God did not call you to be comfortable. God is trying to conform you to his son, Jesus Christ, and he's more interested in your character than he is your comfortable. Right when things were steady eddy, God challenges you. And he calls him. He, he communicates to him. Now this is what's interesting. Uh, God communicates to you on the level and the frequency that fits you best. He's not into playing games. Okay, all right? He communicates to you on the best way that you can receive it. In other words, if you are a dreamer, guess how he will speak to you? In dreams. If you are a prayer warrior, guess how he will speak to you? In prayer. If you stay in your word, guess how he will speak to you? Through the word. Amen. Because there are some people, Steve, that I never, ever text. I only call. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness in that? On the other hand, Ken, though, there are some people I never, ever call. I just text. Because I want to communicate to them on their level. On the other hand, there are some people I never call or text. I only email. Because I want to communicate to them on their level. On the other hand, there are some people I never email, I never text, I never call. I Facebook. Come on, this is getting fun for me. Amen, amen. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. But on the other hand, look, there's some people I never Facebook. There's some people I never email, never call, or text. We only talk in person. But there's some people that I don't ever talk in person. I don't ever email. I don't Facebook. I don't call or text. There's some people we only communicate through postal service. Tell somebody, I get the picture, Pastor. I, get the picture. I got four more I can do. It. <laughs> All right, Somebody's calling now. Amen. Come here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Doesn't God have a beautiful sense of humor? Yes, he does. 
Amen. Amen. Uh, so he communicates the message and he says, Jonah, I want you to go where? I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to go to Nineveh. Everyone under the sound of my voice, God has given you an assignment. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Can you just check real quick to make sure you have a pulse? If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Watch this, Sherelle. And God will enable you to do what you have been called to do so you can do what you can't do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can I say it one more time? He will enable you to do what you've been called to do so you can do what you can't do. And there's only one thing worse than having a pulse and no purpose, and that's having purpose and no pulse. Because the graveyard is filled with purpose and no pulse. Amen, amen, amen. So when God gives you an assignment, when God gives you a word, you need to move fast, quick, in a hurry. Somebody said, the Lord is coming back. You want to make sure that you are doing everything that he has assigned to your hand to do. The word of the Lord. There's two types of words. You have the logos word. And you have the rainbow word. Rain the logos word is big. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a Walmart word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't try it on the Walmart. You just put it in the car. Amen, amen. It, but then there's, a, then there's a Gucci word. It's the fitted word. Amen. Come on, you know that word that just fits your situation. The Logos word, the Bible is made up of 66 books, 1,189 chapters, over 31,000 verses, over 801,000 words. It has two canons. Are y'all catching this? Old Testament and New Testament. But the print, the Roman soldier, when he would be training, he would train with a long sword. Long sword. Long sword. Training with the long sword. But when it came to fight, he fought with the short sword. Because the short sword was the fitted sword, but he had to train with the with the long sword. Because if you can't handle the long sword, you're not going to be effective with the short sword. And a lot of us want the rhema word, but you won't even keep the logos word. See, I studied the logos word all week. I've been studying the logos word, but I'm giving a preach the rhema word. Come on, come on. Because when you're going through, you need a rhema word, but you got to study the logos word. So if you need healing, you need a rhema word to say, by his stripes, I. And healed. If you're confused, you need a rain over. You have to say, Isaiah 26 and 3. If thou will keep me in perfect peace, if I keep my mind stayed on thee. If you are confused, if you're down and out, you need a Nehemiah 8 and 10. The joy of the Lord is my strength. If you're walking around in darkness, you need a Psalm 27 and 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I need a rain over. Point number one, the word. John gets the word. Point number two. John's out the wheel. He's out the wheel. Verse yeah. uh, number three. If you can put it on the screen, verse number three. But John rose up to flee. Where did he go? But before he gets to Tarshish, he, he goes down to where? Joppa. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. So God wants him in Nineveh. Mm -hmm. He's trying to go to Tarshish. But before he goes to Nineveh or Tarshish, he's got to go to Joppa. Because Joppa is the airport. Joppa is the seaport. Joppa is the place, Michelle, where there's options. 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 Joppa is our mind, our will, our mentality because you cannot go straight, Sister Pat, to Nineveh. And you can't go straight to Tarshish. In other words, what I'm trying to say is the devil can't make you do anything and the Holy Spirit can't make you do anything. The Holy Spirit can guide you, but he cannot take you there. And the Satan can watch, he can tempt you, but he cannot make you. You first got to go to Joppa. Anybody ever been to Joppa? Yeah. Joppa 
was tricky because because Joppa, uh, I'm seeing all these different flights, seeing all these different boats. Amen. J Joppa, I, I, I know where Nineveh is, and, and I know where Tarshish is. I'm, I'm living in Joppaville. Anybody that lived in Joppaville, Joppaville is when I know, I know, I know, I, I know about the word, but I also know about the world. I, I, I'm living in, in Joppa. I understand Nineveh. I understand God's will, and I understand what it means to be outside of God's will. I'm living in Joppa. I, I know what it is to tithe, and I, I, I know how to pull that hand up the casino. Come on, come on, come on. Living in Joppa, Joppa, Joppa. I'm a Prayer, we'll pray for you. We'll pray for you, but don't don't mess with me on my bad day because I also will concuss you out because it's Nineveh and Tasha. It's Joppa. I know how to praise this, but I know how to twerk it if I have to. Because I'm living in Joppa. Everybody in Joppa, I take communion on the first Sunday, but you might catch me at the happy hour. Living in, in Joppa, in Joppa, Joppa. Everybody ever been to Joppa there? He's in Joppa. Oh, you've been to Philadelphia International. You've seen the different flights. And Tarshish is 2,500 miles away from Joppa. And Nineveh is 500 miles away from Joppa. Meaning, my ticket price for Tarshish is going to be five times more than my ticket for Nineveh. Because I owe getting out of the will of God is always much more expensive than it is to be inside of the will of God because sin will make you spend more than you planned on sin. It will make you stay longer than you anticipated on sin. Sin is expensive for the wages of sin is death. Meaning this, you got to put a down payment on and it returns death. But the gift of God, I feel the Holy Ghost here, the gift of God is free and it gives you eternal life. God said it's free. No, nobody wants nothing free. We get suspicious when you find out something's free. Amen. And me and my wife and family went to the music park and I had two extra free tickets. Amen. I said, honey, I'll be right back in 30 seconds. I got two free tickets. I'm going to go out here and give them away. They're going to go away like hotcakes. Do you know nobody would take the tickets? So you got two tickets. Now, get away from me. Look, you got two tickets. No, all you got to do is accept and believe. No, I don't want them. No, I don't want them. Something must be funny. Something must be I said, you don't have to believe. Just pay them. You'll start to believe it after you take it. Amen. You'll start to believe after you take it. Say, so you know what? I tried him and I found out that he's all right. I tried him in the midnight hour. I didn't believe it at first, but somebody said, if you call Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call Jesus, he will pick you up, turn you around, put your feet on a solid ground. I tried him for myself. Sit down, sit down, you're making me hot. Sit down, sit down. I need your name. All right, Michael. Amen. Mike, um, it's expensive to live outside the will of God. It takes work. Don't it take work to tell a lie? You gotta remember what you said and who you said it to. Then I gotta say, see, now remember what I did. And remember what we gonna say. So don't say nothing to think. Hey Amen. It, it's expensive. It's expensive to hold a grudge. It's so easy to go up and say, you know what? Brother, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. But you've been holding that grudge of unforgiveness so long. It's expensive. You can't even sit where you used to sit in church because you mad at somebody. It's expensive. You can't go to Walmart on Wednesday because such and such work there. You might say, it's expensive. You got to go all the way across town. It's expensive. You're not even speaking to your spouse. You got to ride around the block 50 times, ladies again. Or you need to go home and say, baby, I'm sorry. Didn't mean it. It's expensive. You, you, you're wasting time and strength and resources. 
Yeah. Jonah makes the decision. Uh, he's going to buy a ticket to Tarshish. Uh, three things you should always do before you buy anything. Ask number one, do I need this? Number two, is it worth it? And number three, can I afford it? Somebody's in something right now. And you're saying, how did I wind up here? And you need to ask yourself a philosophical question, a theological question. Say, do I need this in my life? Amen. Because it's expensive to have a wife and a girlfriend. You'd have, got, you'd have got a burn phone, got a tip phone, come on, you got to change numbers and your It's expensive. You got two Christmases, two Valentine's Day. Come on, come on, just get right with God and do it now. And you need to ask yourself a question. Do I need this right now? Is it worth it? Can I? Somebody right now is in a situation that you don't need, that it's not worth it, and you know you cannot afford it. What was point number one, honey? Uh, the word. Point number two, he's out of the will. There's some more meat on this bone. He's trying to run from the presence. He must have forgot that God is omnipresent. David said it best. He said, if, if I ascend into heaven, if I make my bed in hell, if I take my wings and fly to the uttermost, thou art there. If I go down to the depths of the sea, thou art there. You cannot run from God's presence because every time you run from God's presence, you are running from the fullness of joy because in his presence, there's a fullness of joy and on his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. If you see somebody who don't have no joy, who mean, mad, nasty, act miserable, they could be on the run. That's why they have no joy. But God says, I'm omnipresent. I'm omnipresent. When you woke up this morning, I was in your bedroom. When you left the bedroom, I was in your bathroom, but never left your bedroom. When you left the bathroom, I went down to the breakfast plate. Come on. And when I got to the breakfast table, God was at the breakfast table, but he never left the bathroom and was still in the bedroom. After you left the breakfast table, you went out back, and God was out back, but he was still at the breakfast table. Never left the bathroom, still in your bedroom. After you left the back, you got your beaver. When you got your beaver, God was behind the wheel, still in the backyard, still at the breakfast table, still at the bathroom, still in your bedroom. When you got in your beaver, got to your office building, God was in the hallway, never left the beaver, still in the backyard, still at the breakfast table, still in the bathroom, and still watching CNN in your bedroom. That's called omnipresent. You can't run from God, knucklehead. This means stop, Michael. When I do this, Michael, this means stop. Amen. I like Michael. Hallelujah. He think this means come on. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Stop. what he loves. 
Yeah, it is. Sometimes God will permit what he hates so he can produce what he loves. He says, I'm going to send out a great wind. So there's a storm out on the ocean. And it's, it's headed this way. All right. Um, so Jonah is in a storm. The sailors are in a storm. The ship is in a storm. And the sea is in a storm. Watch. Everybody say, here it is. Come on, say it like you had to read. You just going to say, here it is. Here it is. Everybody's in a storm because of one man's sin. Does that sound familiar to anybody in the Bible? Come on, because of Adam's sin. Come on, sin has been imputed. Come on, sin has been imputed. It means it's been passed down because of one man's disobedience. Every other person has been born into sin, shaped into iniquities. But on the other hand, because of one man's righteousness, because of one man's obedience, all those that were born into sin now can be born again because of obedience. Your disobedience can affect your whole world. That's why you shouldn't be on the cell phone because now your neighbor's on it. That's why you shouldn't sleep because now your neighbor's snoring. Amen. 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 <laughs> Sister Nina, um, I always thought that the only people that were in the storm were those on the boat. But the Bible says there was a storm in the whole sea. So people who were in other boats across that land who didn't even know who Jonah was are experiencing turbulence. Because young people, you are a history maker, a world changer. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You are a shaker. And do you know, do you know that God has called you and given you an assignment, a pulse with a purpose to change an entire nation? The Hebrew boys changed, come on, the entire nation. Watch this. King Babylon said, we're going to serve their God. When you take a stand for the Lord, but on the flip side, you've been outside of God's will. Whenever you're going through a storm, you first must identify what type of storm is it. So let me tell you what a storm is. A storm is any situation, any circumstance that's painful, fearful, stressful, that you have no control over and you have no idea how it's going to end or when. Anybody ever been through a storm? Totally out of your control. You have no idea how and when it's going to end. One man's sin is causing thousands and thousands of Ukrainians to be murdered. One, one man's sin it is, it's, it's uprooting families and uprooting houses and uprooting employees. One man, come, come, I know I'm saying the joke, but I want to say just take that Come on. I think John, I think John and him said, Lord, should we just send down some fire? Amen. Come on, just get this <laughs> What type of storm? Uh, there's a storm of correction. And there's storms of perfection. I want you to evaluate what type of storm you're in. Okay, are you in a storm where God is trying to correct you? Or are you in a storm where God is trying to perfect you? Come on, come on. You look at, because you need to know, is this a snowstorm or is this a windstorm? If it's a snowstorm, I need some rock salt in the shovel. If it's a windstorm, I need to put some boards on my glasses. You've got to know what type of storm Am I going through? I went through a storm last year. I did not like the storm, and I tried to abort the storm. It was a storm of perfect, perfecting, not of correcting. And I'm looking through my life, and God, come on. I ain't did nothing to nobody. My hands are clean. Come on. Looking at my Facebook posts. Come on. Looking at my bank account. Did I say anything wrong? Did I do anything wrong? And God let me know it's a storm of perfecting. And a storm of perfecting, you can't do nothing but wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will renew your strength. Baby, get your hands off it. Come on, you don't need to roll up your sleeves. You don't need to roll your eyes. You don't need to snap your fingers. God is perfecting you because he says, I knew you before I formed you. Come on. Before I put you in your mother's belly, I knew you. And what else is what I have started, I'm going to finish. I'm perfecting you. 
perfecting you, perfecting you. Is it a storm of correction or perfection? Uh, Jonah is the reason for the storm. Now, you could be a Jonah. Or you could have a Jonah. Jonah tells them what the problem is. Jonah says, I'm your problem. Some of you know your problem. And they tried to ignore him. Said, nah, you ain't the problem. We're going to roll this thing and try to get it together. So Delilah said, how can I take you out? Delilah told Samson, how can I bring you down? Samson got the most expensive haircut in the entire Bible, amen, and left there blind, bald, and back. There's some things in your life, somebody is dealing with a sin, and I call it Jonah. And you know Jonah is going to mess up your liver. You know Jonah is going to mess up your thinking. You know Jonah is going to mess up your mind. You know Jonah. Jonah told you, I'm your problem. And you trying to worship around your problem. Worship can never take the place of obedience. You trying to worship over something that God wants you to fix. Signs you could have a Jonah in your life. Real quick, number one. As soon as Jonah got in your life, you start going in the wrong direction. Just because Jonah is on your boat does not mean it has your best intention. And some people, watch this, are in your circle. Watch this, but they're not in your corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just because Jonah's on your boat does not mean Jonah has your best interest. And sometimes you and Jonah are going to the same direction, in the same direction with different motives. Because y'all both come to church, you both sing and praise and worship, but your goal is for the presence of the Lord to come their goal is to get away from the presence of the Lord. Your goal is the Shekinah glory might fall. Their goal is you might see my new shoes. Their goal, come on, come on. We cannot talk to somebody in here. Just because we're on the same team don't mean we have the same vision. So it's about how do you know if Jonah's in your life. As soon as Jonah came in your life, it started to storm. It was sun shining. It was, it, it was a beautiful day as soon as you start fooling with Jonah. As soon as you let Jonah in your space, storms started raging. Come on, come on. Things started messing up. Blender broke down. Car wouldn't start. As soon as Jonah came in, come on, come ministry fell apart. As soon as Jonah came in, come on. And Jonah told you, I'm your issue. The sailors are working. They're rowing, they're casting out cargo, Jonah sleep. How do you know you have a Jonah brother Mike in your life? Because while you're working, while you're praying, Jonah sleeping. Come on, is there anybody in your life you're trying to serve the Lord, you're trying to press to the mark for the pride which is in Christ Jesus, and Jonah is sleeping. Come on, is there anybody in this house you have a Jonah in your life, don't want to do right, don't want to act right, don't want to get out the bed, come on, don't want to do nothing. Jonah's got to go, you got to drown Jonah before Jonah drowns. See, they start casting out cargo. In other words, they start casting out luggage. Come on, they start casting out valuables. Jonah's sleeping. You notice when Jonah got in your life, you start losing stuff. You had good credit before you met Jonah. Come on, come on, come on. Your car was running good before you met Jonah. Come on, you wasn't drinking before you met Jonah. You didn't talk like that before you met Jonah. You didn't know what pornography was before you met Jonah. Now, Jonah, the guy in your life, and you losing stuff, you losing credit, you losing your mind, you losing your material, you're losing your peace, you're losing sleep. Watch out for Jonah! Give me one more sign you living with a Jonah. Jonah keep telling you that he leaving, he leaving, but he won't. Jonah said, 
blow me over. Just tell me, just let me leave. If you don't want me here, just tell me to go. If you don't need me here, I know where I fix. Who's company, who's a crap? I know where I need to be. Tell me, go, go, go. You got a kick. Swing him by the hands, and they say, one for the front, one for the sun, and one for the... Here, your problem is, can I tell you what the problem is? You're trying to be Jonah, Jehovah Jonah. And you scared to throw Jonah out the boat because you don't think Jonah's going to make it, and you don't think you're going to make it, but you don't know that once you throw Jonah over, that God loves Jonah more than you love Jonah. And if you would just let their tail leave, come on, God says, I cannot improve it until you remove it. If you just let Jonah leave and let God have his way, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace and say, now it's him that's able to keep you from fighting, I present a song of fulfill his brother. Jonah, bye-bye. Because you keep giving him a pacifier. Who am I? I'm glad I don't know half of y'all. Because the less I know, the more I can preach. Amen, amen. When I know your business, I'm scared because you might leave the church because you say he met I'm glad I don't know nothing going on in VIC. Charlie's got to go. And as soon as Jonah got out the boat, the sun started shining. The text says, come on, what verse is it? Find that verse. As soon as Jonah got out there, there was a calm. Have you ever had somebody come in your life, and as soon as they came in, it was chaos, and as soon as they left, it was a peace? You were like, how in the world? As soon as they, they left, there was a peace in my spirit and a joy in my soul. Is there anybody in your life, come on, they come in and everything, electric don't work, the mic don't work, piano don't work. As soon as they leave, there's peace like a river. Jonah's telling you, watermelon head, amen. I'm your issue. <laughs> Point number one was what? The word. Point number two, Jonah's out the, the will. And the point number three, the, the wind. Point number four, the whale. Oh, yeah. I know it's a fish to work with me. I need a dumb <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a fish. I've been to Bible college. I, I know it's a fish. <laughs> See, that's why you don't have friends now. Like, it's brother in the well. <laughs> you don't have you got three Facebook friends. <laughs> it's, it's a fish. It's a fish. when he gets to glory. In other words, he says, I want to be particular and specific who I minister to and give grace to. Is there anybody that you can think of? You said, how they get saved? I can't believe they got saved. I can't believe God picked them up. Into, now, they ain't going to stay long. It, it's a Nineveh spirit. So he calls for a whale. And he said, not only do I need a whale, but I need a hotel. He said, so can he stay at the Whale Hotel? Come on, amen. Yeah, and I need him for three days and, and three nights. Sister Lord, imagine if the whale had an attitude 
like Jonah. And it said, I ain't picking up Jonah. He no good. Come on. He don't want to extend grace to nobody. He's backslidden. But aren't you thankful? Come on. That even the winds and the waves and the mammals and the animals, come on, obey his voice. Man is the only creation that struggles. Will I listen to God or not? But the whale said, yes, sir. And God said, by the way, don't chew them. Just swallow them. Don't chew them up. Just swallow them because I had a purpose and a plan. And now Jonah is in the belly of a whale. Notice he went down to Joppa. He went down to Tarshish. He went down in the boat. He went down in the water. And now he's down in the belly because every time you get outside of the will of God, you're going down. And any time you get outside of the will of God, expect bad weather. Make sure you don't have a fit when you're in something that doesn't fit. Because if you have a fit when you're in something that does not fit, you may forfeit what God wants you to get. And if you can be faithful in something that you cannot fit in and be faithful and trust the Lord in a situation that you say, I can't even fit this thing, but I'm going to fit and I'm going to be faithful and I am going to trust God in this situation. So we have the whale. That is protection, not punishment. Mm -hmm. Y'all catching it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's grace. It's grace. But the text says something very interesting. Um, this is in 
Jonah chapter 2. Put me in E flat. We're going to get out of here now. Uh, uh. It says that uh, on the first day, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's complaining about the seaweed around his head. Isn't he? Yeah, he's complaining about come on, things going on in his life. But on the third day, something happens. Come on, on the third day. Come on. I need, I need different chords. Now, on the third day, something happens. When you tell your neighbor something happens on the third day, come on. Great things happen on the third day. On the, on, on the third day. And on the third day. Can I give you my last point? I said, God sent the word. Can I get a witness? And God sent the wind. And God sent the will. But now Jonah, get ready, sent some worship. And Jonah had a prodigal son. Come on. Kind of situation. Jonah woke up in the well. And he said, I'll lift my hands. I'll lift my eyes. And either the seaweed wrapped around my head. I'll give God a shout of praise. Because salvation does not belong to me. Salvation is of the Lord. I'll make a vow. I'll serve him. I'll make a vow. I'll praise him. And for the rest of my life, I'll give him glory. Somebody said earlier really that God's going to turn it around. And when he started to praise God, in his situation, I don't, that well did a turn. Because when you turn, God will turn. Come on. When you turn, God will turn. And every time I turn around, he's blessing me. He's blessing my mind. Blessing my soul. Blessing my feet. Pushed me to my purpose, my praise, drove me to my destiny. And the Bible says that the whale split him up. Split him up. In other words, the thing that was making you sick, your praise is getting ready to make it sick. I feel a praise in the building. I feel a praise in the building. My worship is for real. Didn't know how, didn't know why, didn't know where, didn't know how God was going to use it, but my worship got me through it. How did I wind up here? My dumbness brought me in the way, but God's goodness got me out the way. My foolishness got me in the way. But my favor got me out the way. Come on, come on, come on. My ungodliness, come on, got me in this situation. But God's grace, I said God's grace, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I said, where? I said, where? Where? that I wind up here. Let me tell you something very interesting. I need to stop pausing part. The whale turned around and drove Jonah to Nineveh. Watch this, Sister Bell. And he, the whale spit him out on the seashore. Because when you get spit out on the seashore, there's some things I can see for sure. I can see now that it was the hand of the Lord, and I'm sure. I can see now, come on, as I look back over my life, and I think things over, I'm sure that it was God's amazing grace. When I look back, come on, and see how he renewed my mind, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he healed me, I see now, I'm sure that it was the hand of the When you're going through, you can't see it. I can't see it while I'm in the way. I couldn't see it on the first day. I couldn't see it on the second day. But by and by, come on, we'll understand it better by and by. And Jonah is a typology. 
of Jesus. Because Jesus was in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. But because he was faithful and because he was obedient, the grave had to spit him out on dry land. And he said, if I'll be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw, I'll draw, I'll draw all men unto me. The whale drove Jonah to Nineveh in three days. If he would have took the boat, it would have took him two weeks. Come on, ain't no motors back there. Ain't no coming home. It would have took him two weeks. Do you see God's grace? Because the goodness of God. Come on, the goodness of God. Come on, the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Uh huh. Will cause men to repent. The goodness of God will cause men to change their minds. And Jonah gets there quicker. Because everything that happened to you good, God did it. And everything that happened to you bad, God's going to turn it around. Turn you good. And you can't understand it now. I can't figure it out now. But just give me three days. Tell somebody give me three days. Give me three days. And I'm coming out better than I would have. So you make a question, I fool them. Not how did I wind up in the way? How I wind up in them? How did I get here? Notice to show he had to pay for the fare for Tarshish, but got a free ride. You ought to give God a praise. God's getting ready to give you a spiritual scholarship. If you can learn how to be if you can learn how to be grateful in an ungrateful place, that way I will turn around. God will send the word. And even when you're out of the will, God will send the wind. The wind, the ruah, the breath of God. Because when God sends you His word, sometimes you don't catch it, so He'll send a wind. You ever had the Holy Spirit just touch you and pluck you because you didn't get it from the word? So He said, "Let me send you a wind." And then you didn't listen to the wind, so He had to send you a whooping. Sometimes he'll send you a whooping because you didn't listen to the wind and you didn't listen to the word. But in the whooping, in the in the well, he's doing it because whom he loves, he chastens. Whom he loves, he disciplines. Shoot your hands up in the house, all over the room, and maybe you're inside of the well right now. And you have not been appreciating the well. You've been complaining. And that's because when you're in it, you can't see it. There should not be one American that should complain for the rest of the year. And if you start complaining, do me a favor, turn on the news. The next time you complain, you don't have nothing to wear. Think of someone in Ukraine. The next time the waitress drops your food. The next time you get behind a school bus. Are y'all catching this? You've got to be thankful where you are while you're waiting for God to take you where he wants you to be. How did I end up here? I ended up in this well because of my stupidness. Ended up in Nineveh because of God's sovereignty. Father, I pray for every person
sitting beside my voice today. Let's stay out of the house. Someone is living with the Jonah. 